today and our hearts are open to receive from you. And Lord, we want to walk in the gifts of the Spirit. We want to flow with the Spirit. And just like you said, Lord, that your Spirit, you sent him to lead us and guide us into all the truth. And he'd tell us things to come. So today, we want to understand the gifts of the Spirit and recognize the gifts that are on the inside of us so that we can walk in them proficiently for our profit and for the profit and benefit of the body and for others, our family, that we are blessed to be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Y'all ready to jump into it today? Well, welcome, welcome again. I thank y'all for coming out today. So good to see y'all. Happy birthday, Dana. Dana, Dana, y'all know Dana celebrated her birthday this week. Dana, isn't she so precious? We love Dana and Jack. They are a blessing to this body. I, I Dana said, why you put me on blast like that? You're getting younger. You're going, your birthdays are going backwards anyway, baby, so you're good. Amen. All right, y'all, we started talking about the nine manifestation gifts of the Spirit. And last week, there's nine of them, and last week we uh, started going into them individually. He said, Pastor Stokes, why in the world are you doing that? Ain't I never heard anybody talk about detail about the gifts of the Spirit, and that's probably why they weren't walking in them. You can't walk in what you don't know about, what you don't know you have. And if you didn't know you had authority, you couldn't walk in the authority that you are already have, may have already. And you do have as a believer. And the Bible says that every believer is gifted. We have gifts of the Spirit. Each one of us have been given a gift of the Spirit. And we just need to identify it, recognize them, so we can walk in it for our benefit. And that's why we're talking about it. Turn over in your Bible. I did the faith confession, didn't I? Did I do that? All right, okay, I can't remember. All right, turn over to 1 Corinthians. Y'all got to keep me in line, Rob. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and let's look at verse 7 through 11. This is our foundation text. This is where you get all nine gifts of the, the manifestation gifts listed right here. And so let's just read it real quickly, and you'll get a listing of all of them from verse 7 to 11. 1 Corinthians 12, y'all there? And then an interesting, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14, they all go together chapter 12 lists the gifts of the spirit chapter 13 talks about love why because the gifts of the spirit even though you can flow with the, uh flow in the gifts of the spirit but the bible says without love they're meaningless and then chapter 14 goes on and talks about tongues and interpretation of tongues and prophecy so why because that's a gift that all of us can really flow in uh, uh, and those vocal gifts or those utterance gifts are vitally, vitally important. And many of the other gifts actually flow through them. So we'll learn all that. We'll go into the details so that you can identify the gift that you have and learn to flow into it. But here we are in verse 7. Are y'all there? But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to who? To each one. There we go, right there. That's what I want you to know. So the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. As a believer, we just want to be able to identify, and that's why we need, we need to go through all nine of them so you can recognize. And many times, y'all know it, just like with your natural gifts, you may have a gift, and it's so common to you, it's you don't recognize that it's a gift. Are y'all with me? I thought everybody loved the study of the Bible. But that was my gift. You get what I'm saying? As a teacher. So the manif but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So you can see it's not just for you, just like the fruit on the tree isn't for the tree. It's for others to eat it. It is not just for you, but it's for the profit of all. For to one. So this says you don't get every gift. For to one is given the word of wisdom. I believe that this is the most, the greatest gift. There's a passage that says desire the best gifts. And this one is listed first, and in fact, I'll, I'll tell you more detail about this, but this is the one that we're going to focus on today. But to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. Notice it keeps saying through the Spirit, because many people have taken these, uh, these are supernatural gifts, and many thought, well, I've got the word, I've got the gift of wisdom. No, the, there is no gift of wisdom. It is the, the word of wisdom. And people think that this is a natural gift. Oh, I study a lot. I've got that gift. No, this is a supernatural gift. And I'll talk further about that. But they're through the Spirit. They're, they're given by the Spirit as the Spirit wills. We'll see here. To another, the word of knowledge, a second gift. Uh, through the same Spirit, verse 9. To another, faith by the same Spirit. Now, there, of course, I, I could talk about each of them in great detail but we'll get into detail about that that's that's supernatural faith that's not just the faith to get born again that is mountain moving faith amen 
uh, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit. These are all spirit manifestations. Next. Uh, t- uh, to another, the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Look at verse 11. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as who wills, as he, the spirit wills. So we don't get to choose, pick and choose. Well, you know, I, I, I want that gift of healing, the gifts of healing. I want this wonder working. I sure would like to do that. I could really be awesome if I could work those miracles. No, the Bible says, no, as he wills. So why we need to understand him is because the Bible says you've got a gift. We just need to identify so, so that you know what that gift is. Amen? So that's why we're going through them. We're going to take the time to go through each one, give you Bible examples, and uh, to what to look for and what to recognize in these gifts. Amen? All right. Now, we just read straight through uh, verse 7 through 11. But do you remember last week I told you that the nine manifestation gifts can be categorized in three different categories? Y'all remember? The first is the revelation gifts, which do what? They reveal something. Anybody remember what those are? Word of, right? Uh Uh-huh, and discerning of spirits. And really in this order, word of wisdom, that's the greatest, word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. The next category, and what do those do? Those reveal something. And this is an easy way to remember. They reveal something. They're revelation gifts. You know word of wisdom it reveals something and the word of knowledge reveals discerning of spirits second category are the power gifts they do something three gifts that do something remember those gift of faith wonder working miracles and the gifts of healing all right and then the third category the last ones are the utterance gifts or the vocal gifts the spoken gifts they are in number one Prophecy, the most important. And then secondly, tongues and interpretation of tongues. All right? And oftentimes in the scriptures, you'll see all th- the, those groups working together. You see them they'll, they'll work intermittently. Amen? All right, and that's an easy way to remember them. All right, so today we're going to focus on the word of wisdom. Here's the definition of the word of wisdom. Word of wisdom is the supernatural revelation of, by the Spirit of God concerning the divine purpose and plan in the mind and will of God always speaks of the future. This is like what many people would consider like a premonition. It's a, it's a glimpse into, into the future, a glimpse into something that's going to happen. And it's over and over in the Scripture. So typically, typically in the Bible, when people, well, let me say it like this, when people say he prophesied, Prophecy is, is really just edification, exhortation, and comfort. Edification to build up, exhortation to, to stir up, and comfort to cheer up. That's the way I like to remember it. That's what simple prophecy is just that. But when someone gives a revelation about the future, a revelation about something that's going on that's not visible, that is a revelation gift. And so any time in the scriptures, like all the prophets... The reason that the prophets like Ezekiel, Isaiah, why they were called prophets is because they flowed not in just prophecy, but they flowed in a revelation gift, a word of wisdom. Most of when 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 Ezekiel or Isaiah is prophesying about Jesus coming, that is a word of wisdom. It's a glimpse, a premonition. He's seeing into the future. He's seeing something that's going to happen with the body of Christ, the birth of Jesus. Y'all get it? Prophecy is just encouragement of building cheering up y'all get it but when there is an element of revelation in it about the future that's all and is it getting warm in here i mean i'm starting to sweat too come on somebody it's not just y'all it's me too come on somebody hey and i don't know how to work any of that praise the lord all right uh okay so y'all get that y'all get that so now um the the many people think Word of wisdom, word of knowledge. I've got that. I've got knowledge. I've got wisdom. It is not. It is not just natural knowledge. The the word of wisdom, in letter A in my notes, is not wisdom in the affairs of life. 
It's not just practical, sakal wisdom. Joshua 1.8 tells us where that wisdom comes from. The Proverbs tell us where that wisdom comes from. In Joshua 1 and 8, Amplified Version, I love it. Listen to what it says. It says, this book of the law, in other words, this, the word shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall do what? Meditate on it. Meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it. In other words, if you want to do what the word says, you're not going to be able to do it unless you meditate on it. Think on it. Think on it, right? Put it in your mind. Re renew your thinking to what God says versus what you think naturally or what it may look like. <clears throat> In other words, the words shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then you shall make your way proper, prosperous, and then you shall do what? Deal wisely and have good success. That, again, is the result of getting in the word. We see it all through the Proverbs, and that's why we spend so much time. And I encourage you to spend, just get a, a proverb a day. Today's six of the month. Somebody always says, Pastor, we sure would like you to get on and do the Proverbs every day. I would like to, too. Come on, somebody. But it can wear me out. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Amy, I need a break from for a minute. All right, so uh, it's not natural wisdom by, by studying, but there, that, is, that is valuable, but that's not what the word of wisdom is. Solomon's wisdom. Some people, have, I've heard this, that Solomon had the gift of the word of wisdom. No, he did not. Solomon's wisdom wasn't a manifestation of the word of wisdom. His wisdom was God-given wisdom by simply asking. The same way that you and I ask for wisdom, and the Bible encourages us over and over. Look over at Solomon uh, in 2 Chronicles chapter 1 and verse 10. They'll put it up here on the screen if you don't know where that is in the Bible. Come on, somebody. No problem. 1 King, 2 King, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles. And it's the same account is in 1 Kings, but I like this one better. But in, in Chronicles, you all remember, uh, Solomon is about to become king. David, his father, has died, and he goes to the Lord in prayer, and he says, Now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. In other words, that I can lead right, that I can be a proper leader, that I can be a king. For who can judge this great people of yours? If you read on, you don't have to now, but if you read on the next couple verses... God was blown away by this. He says, I'm so pleased that you didn't ask for riches, you didn't ask for long life, you didn't ask for your enemy, but you asked for wisdom. He said, because you asked for wisdom, you're going to get riches. Because you asked for wisdom, you're gonna, your enemies will become your footstool. Because you, and do you all get the, the, the gravity of that? But again, this is good news because this is something that all of us can ask for. Ask for It's not a money problem, it's a wisdom problem. I like to say it's not a marriage problem, it's a wisdom problem. It's not even a health problem. It's a wisdom problem. Look over at James chapter 1 and verse 5. Again, what I'm saying, this is, this is not what the word of wisdom is, but this is, is something we all need. Y'all get it? But James chapter 1 and verse 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him do what? Ask of God. Who gives how? Liberally and without reproach, and it will be given him. Amplified translation says, and he won't rebuke you. He won't put you on blast about it. If you don't know, God says, ask me. Y'all, this is one of the greatest, to me, one of the greatest things in the scriptures. Uh, today, as I'm, I'm quoting Psalm 91, as I do every day, verse, verse 10, is it verse 10? Verse, it says, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I love that, 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. Do y'all love that? So do y'all ever do that? Just like, Lord, okay, Lord. <laughs> I need to know about this. Let me know. And, uh, and it's just a beautiful thing to have a real relationship with God where you can ask him. Okay, so, but again, I just want to point out that's available to us, but that's not what the word of wisdom is. Amen? Uh, the word of knowledge versus the word of wisdom. You notice here in your notes, I put that. They work in conjunction together oftentimes. And I've showed you a few passages in, in Acts last week, chapter 8. Acts chapter 9 with Saul, Ananias, were both of those where they, where they work. But I want to show you the difference just so you can identify the difference. The word of knowledge, word of knowledge is a supernatural revelation concerning certain facts about people, places, or things past or present. Like if you ever hear me give a word uh, about, a, a he, about a sickness, a pain, or something like that, that is a word of knowledge. Are you with me? Um, 
word of wisdom is a supernatural revelation concerning purposes and plans of God in the future. Now, all of these things, hey, Pastor Bob, good to see you. All of these gifts, they're there to profit with all, profit all, but they also can profit you. In your personal prayer life, and this is one of the things I want to encourage you and us as believers to do. Don't just wait for public ministry to, to, to exercise these gifts. You want to exercise this in your own personal life. The greatest, greatest insight and, and plan and purpose of God that I got for me was regarding my future as a pastor. You get it? And think of, and this happened years ago before I was ever pastoring, before I was doing any of it. I didn't know, but I began to ask God, and God revealed to me a future that I had as a pastor. Changed everything in my life. Are you with me? So, I mean, these are things that you, that you want to use in your own personal life. They're gifts that will benefit you. When Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 13, the Holy Spirit, he will reveal to you things to come. He wants you to know things in your life that you need to know that will, that will help your life as well as others. These can be utilized in public ministry, in the public setting at church, and we want to, we want to flow in that as well. But it's best to start it right in your own personal life. And that's where, that's where you'll get practice in it. You know, just, just practice. Begin flowing. Begin prophesying. Prophe oh, y'all, before we ever moved here and we lived in Orlando, Florida, I'd get up every morning. I had a dog named Deacon Stokes. I come on, somebody. Our, our Chinese Sharpay. Y'all know what I'm talking about, them little wrinkly dogs. And I walk every day with that dog prophesying, calling this church into being. We didn't have a church. We didn't live in the city. We didn't do, but I knew we were going to have a church named Destiny. That's all I knew. And that's what I do. I just began, why? And think of the benefit that that did. Now I began to just call it into being, start dreaming about it, meditating on it. Y'all get it? To birth, oh my God, I'm getting into next week's message. <laughs> to birth, to birth the seed that God has for you it takes gestation, and it takes growing it on the inside of you. If it isn't big in here, you'll never see it out here. Prosperity, health. You know, many people see themselves only in their current condition. You know, if you're, if you're crippled, if you're in a wheelchair, you've got to begin to see yourself walking. It's meditating on that. It's meditating on seeing yourself the way God sees you. And the, it, that's congruent with the word. That's in line with that. And that just takes meditation. And that's what that pastor was talking about. It's meditating on that. It's beginning to see it. Y'all know it. Muttering it. Seeing it. Birthing it. And that's part of what these are for. God gives you a word of wisdom. Not necessarily a paragraph. It may just be a thought. It may just be a, a glimpse. You get what I'm saying? It's a small piece. It's a... It, God is omniscient. He has all knowledge. He has all wisdom. But he just gives you a glimpse. A glimpse. And by faith, you take that. You get it? By faith, you take that. You say it. It's like, it's like Martha when she was birthing Jesus. It was the same thing. The angel came and told her what the will of God and word of God was. But she had to take that and accept it and think on it. And the Bible says it when you read in the Amplified. She began to think on that and meditate on that, and mutter that, and say that out loud. And, and that's how you begin. Where it becomes so real to you. It becomes real to you even before you see it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You start getting faith for the wealth, for the health, for the, for the marriage, for the home, for the whatever. Y'all get what I'm saying? You've got to see it before you see it. And so again, these are just a word. It's a, it's a glimpse. It's a, it's a piece of God's knowledge. Are y'all with me? Or a piece of his wisdom. About the future is what the word of wisdom is. And, and again, amen. All right, let's, let's, let's go, I'll, I'll go all day and we need to look at some scripture so you can see it. All right? Uh, so, letter D. The utterance gifts... Y'all remember the utterance gifts? Come on. Prophecy, interpretation of tongues, 
and tongues. Tongues and interpretation of tongues. The prophet, those will be utterance gifts. The utterance gifts can be a vehicle for the revelation gifts, as well as dreams and visions. We'll see that in the scriptures. But do you get what I'm saying? The utterance gifts, you can can be a vehicle for the word of wisdom or the word of knowledge, right? It can be a vehicle for it. You speak it out. You can, you can convey it through those utterance gifts. So someone may be, you know, may give a tongue, and the interpretation of that tongue may include a word of wisdom about your future. You get it? Um, years ago, years ago, can I, I'll just give you all some examples. Years ago, I was maybe 18 or 19 years old, sitting in the back of World Harvest Church before it was before it was World Harvest Church. It was Word of Life Church, a little little church with one aisle. Y'all know the kind of church with the aisle down the middle and the bathrooms right up here in the front. If you had to go to the bathroom, you had to walk past the preacher. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That goes out the door, and that's how the church was. And I'll never forget. I was there, and it was it was uh, Lester Summerall, Doctor Lester Summerall, Norval Hits. He had all those those great fathers of faith there. And I was at, the, at a service, and I came in late, and I was sitting in the very back. The building was really packed. It only sat like 200 people. And it was packed in the back, and I was sitting in the very back. And the preacher got up, and it was Lester Summer, and he said, you in the back. And, of course, I was like, uh-oh. I thought, you know, I wasn't sure if it was fussing because I came in late. But he said, you in the back. And he said, stand up. And Rod said, you, stand up. And uh, I wasn't playing the band or anything right there. And he began to prophesy that one day I would be in the ministry through a prophecy. This is Lester Summer. Are y'all with me? Listen to me. There was one day I was at church and uh, Norval Hayes was there and he was, he was, Norval, y'all remember Norval Hayes? Oh, Norval Hayes and he talked real slow. His services would last so long I couldn't hardly stand it. But he, and he wore white all the time. <laughs> white suit, white tie, white shoes, white everything. And he had white hair and he was a white dude. Kind of looked like Colonel Sanders. Come on, somebody tag. And, uh, and, and I'm there at the service, and I played in the band. This is years later. And he, and he started prophesying about someone or gave a word about someone who had a, a problem. And it was me. I knew it was me. And it was back then. I don't know, Mom, if you remember this, but I would have this bleeding when I would use the bathroom sometimes. I know it's kind of gross. But he, pro- he said it, and, and I knew it was me. And he, he said it would be painful at times to use the bathroom. Well, anyway, he, uh, he, he said it, and I came up and laid hands on and it was healed that day. You get, and so, again, these gifts of word of knowledge, word of wisdom, they can come through prophecy, they can come through tongues, interpretation of tongues. Y'all get it. That's what I'm trying to point out right there. Amen? Uh, ooh, ooh, let me read this. The gift of prophecy is given for edification, for exhortation and comfort, but not for revelation. So whenever revelation is giving, it's not just prophecy. Remember, and that's that's First Corinthians 13, 14 and 3 talks about that. That is for uh, uh, edification, building up, exhortation, stirring up, comfort, cheering up, but not for revelation. The revelation gifts, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, are to reveal something. I can cheer you up without revealing something. I can stir you up without revealing something get it now a prophet a prophet in the in the in the bible they'll always have not just prophecy but they'll always also flow in a revelation gift so a true prophet will prophesy encourage exhort right comfort but they will also flow in a revelation gift a true prophet people today just call them prophets but no no a prophet according to the scripture will flow like that amen y'all see it so if there's an element of foretelling or prediction in a prophecy, it's a word of wisdom, all right? All right, and so I explained that. When the Old Testament prophets foretold, they were actually, actually exercising the word of wisdom. Y'all get it? So whenever you're reading Ezekiel, Isaiah, any of that, you, they're telling, foretelling something that's going to happen. That is actually the gift of word of wisdom. All right, now let's look at some Bible examples of the word of wisdom. Uh, first of all, in the Old Testament, all... There's nine manifestation gifts that are shown in the, ni- in the New Testament. Seven of them operated in the Old Testament. Which two did not operate in the Old Testament? 
tongues and interpretation of tongues. That's exactly right. They prophesied, but they didn't speak in tongues or interpretation of tongues. That is a grace gift under the new covenant. And again, one of the main reasons that I encourage you to pray in tongues, it is a grace gift. Under the new covenant, we have such a great advantage. Oh, in fact, Jesus said it. He said there was there, uh, John the Baptist was a great prophet, the greatest, but every person in the kingdom now is greater than him. That's huge. He was the one who, who uh, the, the forerunner to Jesus, told the world that Je who Jesus was, that he was coming, right? However, he says everyone under the new covenant is greater than him. Why? Because you and I have the ability to prophesy our future, to speak in tongues, to pray the perfect will of God all the time in other tongues. Come on, somebody. We take that way too lightly. All right, so the, uh, let's look at this one. Noah. Noah had a word of knowledge. Turn over to Genesis chapter 6, verse 13 through 18. Let's see how this looks. Watch this. God said to Noah, I'm in Genesis chapter 6, verse 13. I'm reading all the way to verse 18. And oftentimes, word of wisdom can be words of warning. In other words, they can be warning to tell you to change something. And then if you change the thing, we'll see that in the scriptures too, that, that word won't come to pass. It'll be changed. You know, it can be a warning. Watch this. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come upon me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. That's not a word of knowledge. Why? Because it is telling of a future intent and purpose and plan of God in the heart of God. You see how it's in the future there? Watch. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover the it inside and outside with pitch. So God starts giving him instruction and direction what to do because this imminent destruction is coming. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. It's, 50, uh, it's width 50 cubits. It's height 30 cubits. Is this awesome? I love this that God is giving such direct instruction here to him. And let's see, 100. Uh, you shall, verse 16, and you shall make a window for the ark, and you shall finish it to a cubit from above, and set the door in the ark in its side. You shall make it, uh, make it with lower, second, and third decks, three levels. And behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh, in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish, look at this, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, your sons' wives, with you. So he gives him, tell, this is a word of wisdom. Why? Because it is future. It is, it hasn't happened yet when God is telling him, but he's receiving this word from God. Do you all see that? So word of knowledge has to do with, with facts of people, places, of things, present and past word of wisdom is regarding the future purpose and plan and intent of God amen let's look at Joseph Joseph you remember Joseph Joseph got a word of wisdom through a dream so we can see that through dreams you can get the word of wisdom and even word of knowledge look over in Genesis chapter 37 I'm going to read verse 5 through 10 now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. Come on, somebody. So he said to them, please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There were, now, this, this too is indicative that everything God says to us, it, there's, a, there's probably a good and a bad timing to, to share it with others. <laughs> Come on, not everything can you share. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And indeed, your sheaf stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. Come on, somebody. And his brother said to him, uh, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Next. Then he dreamed still another dream, and he told it to his brothers and said, Look, I've dreamed another dream, and this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. 
dad and mom bowing down to me now. So he told it to his father and his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you've dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? If you jump ahead, you don't have to do it now, but all the way down into chapter 45, that happened. That happened. It was, and, and over those next several chapters, of course, it looked real bad. And this is, this, is such, this is such a great thing to understand. Had he looked at his circumstances, I mean, he went, his brothers turned on him, threw him into a pit, sold him into slavery. He went to prison for a crime, sexual crime he didn't commit. Everything went bad. But guess what? Because of this word of wisdom that God had showed him in a dream, he held on to that. And everything turned around. Think about this, how vital that is, how good it is to know. The fact that we have the book of Revelation, the fact that we have these truths about what happens after we as believers die, the fact that we know we don't have to fear death. If you get a word of wisdom regarding, now all of our end ends well. Whatever it is between now and when Jesus comes, whatever goes on, trust me the end for you and I as believers is going to be good it's going to be good regardless of what happens in between now if you spend time with God and pray in tongues and get a word of wisdom regarding your assignment here on earth even when things look like they're not working out oh my God I want to talk about that so much don't quit don't give up don't throw in the towel there is victory for you don't you dare quit the promise that God has for you will come to pass regardless of what it looks like now. And that's why we need to know this word. We need to know what God has promised us. And then the specifics, some of the specifics, because this is specifics, right? Specifics regarding his family and his assignment and his call. That's why these gifts are so important. I will show you things to come, Jesus said, and that's how he'll do it right through the gifts of the Spirit. Isn't that good news right there? Turn over to Isaiah. Here's one. Oh, excuse me, turn over to, uh, excuse me, Isaiah prophesied it to, uh, to Hezekiah, but it's in 2 Kings chapter 20. 2 Kings comes right after 1 Kings, if you didn't know that one. Praise the Lord. Amen. I bet that didn't help you any, did it? <laughs> but here, here is a, a conditional word. There's a few times in the Bible that there were conditional words or warnings, a word of wisdom. This is going to happen if you don't make some change. And that's what happened to Hezekiah. Look at this. Y'all there, 2 Kings chapter 20. I think I'm going to read all the way to verse 10. Let me take a look at it. Verse 6. All right. In those days, Hezekiah was sick. King Hezekiah, y'all remember? Was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Lord have mercy, not, not the kind of word he wanted to hear. Watch what happens. Verse 2, then he turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, immediately after he heard that, it changed his heart, and he's like, uh-uh, I got, I got to pray. Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I walk before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what was good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Yeah, I've blown it. I made some bad mistakes, but I'm ready to turn it around. I'm I, I'm. I can get this right. Y'all get what I'm saying? Right? And it happened. Before, watch this. Isaiah prophesied it to him, and before he got out of the court, courtyard, the king's courtyard, and it happened before Isaiah had gone out into the middle of the court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, Return and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, thus says the Lord, God of, of David, your father, I have heard your prayer and I've seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. On the third day you shall go up to the house of the Lord, and I will add to your days 15 years. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. This is good news right here. Listen to me. If the doctor gives you a negative report, if it's looking real bad, I am telling you, start prophesying. Now, of course, we're under the new covenant. God, now this is why it's so important that we understand how to execute. These are laws. You all get this? As a believer, just because you're a believer and just because you're filled with the Holy Ghost, tragedy and stuff can happen. 
you and I have got to learn how to walk in the laws. The law of gravity, will it will kill uh, a, a saint who jumps off of a building, black, white, yellow, red, skinny, thick. It don't matter what you are. You violate the law, it's going to, bur- it's going to kill you. And likewise with the laws of God, they're laws. You and I have to learn to execute them. Electricity is, works 100% of the time. It, will, it can work for my advantage if I understand it, or it can work to my disadvantage if I don't understand it, even with a well-meaning heart. If there's an electrical storm and I see a, a wire, a phone wire, something in the street, and I'm, oh, let me move that before somebody gets hurt. I'm about to get hurt because I violated the law. And so we've got to learn how to execute it. But here, and that's what I'm going to talk about on Sunday, how to execute these laws, how to release them. So when, when you get negative reports from doctors, when it looks like things are going wrong, you can turn it around. You can turn it around. Come on, say amen. This man turned it around under the old covenant by repenting and getting his heart right. Amen? Add 15 years to his life. A come on, somebody. Hey. Look over at Jonah. Here's another one, another warning, another. Y'all remember Jonah? This book is the bomb. I love, and it's a very short book. I think it's only four bo- four chapters or so. Very short. But uh, here again, here's a man who had a word of knowledge. If you read through the book, it's so adorable because at the very beginning, and the word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, told Jonah to go and preach, right, to go over to Nineveh. And he jumped on, the, on a ship going the opposite direction. Y'all remember the story? He went on a sh- got on a ship going the wrong direction. Storm came. Uh, the people on the, on the ship was like, hold up, what's going on? There's a problem here. They, and, and he said, I know the problem is me. <laughs> I'm outside of the will of God, and it's bringing a storm on y'all. There's so much truth in this, y'all. Come on, somebody. And so anyway, they, hey, y'all going to have to throw me out. They threw him overboard. God sent a whale to swallow him up. He was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. The whale, of course, had GPS and took him right to Nineveh. <laughs> took him right to Nineveh, spit him up on shore. Come on, somebody. He realized, you know what? Watch this. Watch what the Bible says. Here's where it picks up. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, yet 40 days, and here he's prophesying, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God. Look, he didn't want to go, but finally he gets there and says, okay, look, this city's going to be overthrown, right? He didn't want to go because he said, them people ain't going to listen to me anyway. (laughs) He goes and he prophesies. He says, this city is going to be destroyed in 40 days. Uh, So the people of Nineveh believed it proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. They changed their heart. Jump down to verse 10. Then God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God relented from the disaster that he had said would bring, that he would bring upon them and he did not do it. In other words, that was a warning. It was a word of wisdom that says, Y'all gonna, it's, this is not going to end well for you. Come on, somebody. And God gave them that word. They changed their heart. They changed their ways. And God changed his mind on it. And it didn't happen. Come on, somebody. Many examples in the New Testament as well. Agabus the prophet. Y'all remember Agabus in the book of Acts? In the book of Acts, you can find all this stuff. In the book of Acts, all nine gifts of the Spirit you'll find in the book of Acts. Acts, the, the Acts of the Apostles. But Agabus the prophet. We first hear about him in Acts chapter 11. In verse 27 and 28, uh, in the day, look at this, and in the days of the prophets came from Jerusalem, in, in these days prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Then one of them named Abigus, and he was pretty theatric, come on somebody, you'll see it in a minute, uh, stood up and showed, watch this, then one of them named Agabus stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. All right, so he gets up and he says, there's, there's going to be a great famine. And if you read through the rest of the passage, it says that, that, uh, that they, they abided to him and started preparing for that. So this was a, this was a, a word, that, a, a prophecy, that, was, that gave the people time to make preparation for what was coming. Isn't that good news? Amen. Think about what we know just from prophecy in the scripture about these last days, about how children be, will become disobedient, how that, that crime will become ra- ravenous, how the Bible talks about how there'll be uh, 
uh, licentiousness, homosexuality, and outrageous things that are going on. So are we shocked and surprised by what we see going on in the media? Are we shocked and surprised that somebody would stand up and start shooting people at a, at a parade? Are we shocked at that? No. We know that's happening. And, and because we know of what's happening, we should prepare by shielding ourselves with the Word of God. Are y'all listening to me? Because we know that. You can't just go on and just go, oh, that's just the way the world is. I'm a believer. I'm in the world. No, no, no. We know those things so that we can prepare. Don't leave the house without covering yourself with the, and your family in the blood of Jesus with your mouth, executing protection over yourselves. Amen. Are y'all with me? All right. Uh, chapter 21. Let's go about Agabus again. You'll see all kinds of prophecy prophecy and stuff going on in these chapters but uh acts chapter 21 agabus again verse 10 and as we stayed many days a certain prophet named abagus came down from judea when he had come to us he took paul's belt watch this and bound his own hands and feet and said thus says the holy spirit so shall the jews at jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Now, when he had heard these things, we both, uh, we both we and those from that place pleaded with Paul. This is about Paul, not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, "Watch, Paul. What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? Yeah, y'all breaking my heart saying all this stuff." He says, for I, am not, for I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. So when, he, so when he would not be persuaded, we cease saying, the Lord will, uh, uh, the will of the Lord be done. Now, do y'all get what's going on here? The prophet, now here's how awesome God is. God's warning him. You go up here, they're going to bind you, they're going to throw you in prison, they're going to kill you. He says, I don't even care. I'm ready to go. My life is ready to be poured out like a like a uh, an offering. Do y'all get this? But isn't this good to know? Here's God saying, uh-uh, Paul, don't go. Paul's like, I don't want to go anyway. There were several times Paul went against when uh, Paul went one place and the Spirit told him not to go there. He went there anyway. Paul was called to preach to the to uh, to the Jews, but he wanted to go and preach to the Gentiles. Peter was called to go preach to the Gentiles, but Paul wanted to go because he loved his people, and he ended up getting bound up because of it. Are you all with me? And, but he was like, I don't care anyway. Now, uh, of course, Paul, Paul uh, he had been stoned before. He had been, Paul had been through a whole lot, and, and of course, we, we all get to meet Paul and talk to Paul. I look forward to talking to him and, and meeting him. But at the same time, you see that he did not love his life under death. He could care less. Paul was like, I'm going to preach the, preach the gospel, and if it costs me my life, my life so be it. Whew, come on, somebody. I, I choose to uh, hang around a little bit. Come on, somebody. If, if I got a word about death, I'm going the other direction. I Come on, somebody. I don't know. Praise the Lord. That's just me. Amen. Did I read all that? So he would not be concerned. Okay, let's look at this last one. This is uh, regarding Paul. Paul got a word here. Look at this in, in Acts chapter 27. Verse 9, I'm going to read verse 9 through 11, then 21 through 25. Are y'all getting an understanding about this? So why am I showing you this? Is because, too, oftentimes, y'all, have y'all ever been driving and just something, it just seems like, ah, uh, I don't want to go that way. I don't want to go, ah, uh, I think I'm going to go. Do. That's the step that I want you to listen for. Are y'all with me? And it's and it's subtle like that. This when we read in the scriptures, the spirit said, and this this Agabus is very theatrical. You get that? He took a belt, wrapped himself up. This whoever but this belt belongs to, you get what I'm saying. It's very theatric. The spirit said. But if you're by yourself, it'll typically come as a still small voice. Just the thought. Just enough. Have y'all ever got that and then ignored it? And then go. I knew this. I should have known. And that's what I'm trying to get you to be keen to. It's that knowing. It's to be sensitive to that. And oftentimes, that's, it happens as the Spirit wills. It can be something as simple as avoiding traffic or avoiding an accident or just being delayed a little bit or something. But 
But why I'm showing you this is because that's exactly what it is. It's the Holy Spirit going, no, 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 I'm trying to protect you from this. I'm trying to keep you from those, some foolishness going down over at the Walmart now. I'm trying to keep you from some foolishness going down over at your cousins in them house. You don't need to go. Come on, y'all feel it? It's, that, that's what I want y'all to recognize. Praise the Lord. Here's Paul. Acts chapter 27, verse 9 through 11. Here we go. Now, when much time uh, had been spent and set, okay, you remember this, Paul's about to go get on a ship and, uh, and, and go on, and I remember which journey it was, but he was getting on a ship and, and uh, he was a prisoner, actually. Now, when much time had been spent and sailing was now dangerous because of the fast was already over, Paul advised him. Paul's on this ship, and, and look what he says, saying, men, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster. And much loss, not only of the cargo of the ship, but also our lives. This is not going to be good if we sail now. Watch what the men say. Nevertheless, the centurion, the soldier, was more persuaded by the helmsman, the captain of the ship, and the owner of the ship, than by the things spoken by Paul. Here's Paul giving insight, a word of wisdom about this voyage. This is not going to end well. People are looking at the weather and listening to the captain and said, nah, we're going to sell anyway. But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood up in the midst of them and said, men, you should have listened to me. If you read the verses in between, that there is a storm that they can't fight. It's going bad. They're throwing everything overboard. They threw, over, threw everything overboard, and they still can't see. They have, they've got no food, nothing. They've been... They haven't eaten for days. They can't see if it's day or night. It's really, really bad. Uh, come on, somebody. Look what Paul does. But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood up in the midst of them and said, he wasn't trying to fast. There was no food on board now. Are y'all with me? Men, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. Come on. And again, I love that because that's typically the thought that will come when you're in the middle of something, and you felt that in your heart. And it, it, again, it's, it's like on the inside. And typically not a voice, but just a thought, a subtle thought. All right? And now I urge you to take heart. Now watch. If you'll pray in the Holy Ghost, pray. Start, throughout your day, make it a part of your routine. I really believe you'll be more keen to that and be able to go like, ooh, you know what? I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to go this direction or whatever the case may be. He says, uh, verse 22, And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only the ship. <laughs> right? Go to the, for there stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. He said, There's a purpose for your life. I'm not finished with you yet. you got to stand before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with me, uh, with you. He said, he's saying, and all of you, because I'm on board, he's going to spare your life too. But stay with the ship, because now everybody's wanting to jump overboard. <laughs> everybody's wanting to jump off the ship. Come on, somebody. Paul says, don't jump overboard. Stay on board. The ship's going to get tore up, but just hold on to something. <laughs> Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. Are y'all with me? So here again, Paul, and again, y'all, all of us have come into these situations as born-again believers, and oftentimes even unbelievers. Unbelievers benefited from this, benefited from Paul. Y'all with, with me? And so again, the whole purpose that we're going through this is to understand those gifts and to recognize it, to pause, start your day off in prayer, start your day off in covering with prayer. You get it? Think about it. I think about those, those things that we see on the news on the news and these events that go on around the world and I'm thinking you know I would it, you would be remiss as a believer to leave your house you know Shanae said it yesterday she goes wow it's not even safe at a parade it's not a sa it's safe for us when we put get under the blood get under the, uh, the hands the wings of the almighty plead the blood over our family declare it take the time in fellowship with God close your Bible y'all learning today